Alors, premièrement, je m'excuse parce que mon chinois n'est pas aussi, aussi bien que le vecteur. Alors, je suis sur le discours en français ou en chinois est plus approprié pour notre conférence d'aujourd'hui. C'est pourquoi je vais imiter mon discours. So, at CCG, I focus on researching the impact of technology on international relations. And more specifically, I focus on the impact of technology on great power competition. So, how does this relate, this historical anecdote? Um, a positive political environment is a prerequisite for and accelerates technological advancement. So we, I won't go into this here, but if anyone's interested, certainly happy to discuss this uh, in further detail. We all know that China is very advanced in some of these areas, digital payments, high-speed rail, uh, certain aspects of space uh, exploration. But at the same time, China is also still a developing country. And as a result of this, I think has much to share uh, with other developing countries, especially in the Francophone sphere. Related to technology, I think there's three areas in particular I would like to emphasize today. The first is the digital yuan. So the CBDCs, as it's sometimes called, central bank digital currencies. And why this matters, especially for the developing countries in the Francophone world, is that with uh, advances like the digital yuan, financial inclusion is converging with digital inclusion. So where we see uh, inexpensive, ubiquitous smartphones, such as those by Transient, uh, sold very successfully by Transient in places like Africa, uh, that this not only allows people to get online, but it also lets them have access to financial services. And it's not just a technological question. Um, one of the biggest issues regarding the digital yuan is it is profoundly disruptive in that, theoretically at least, it can provide direct connection from a financial perspective between an issuing government and end users such as consumers and businesses. So again, a very, very complex topic that I won't go into too much here. But uh, the, this of course raises profound implications for the existing financial infrastructure, i.e. banks. Um, so this may turn out to be more of a north-south question versus an east-west one uh, in this regard, as we see this dynamic also playing out uh, at COP27, the developed countries versus the developing countries. The second area is agriculture. So we heard today uh, from some of the other speakers about China's poverty alleviation program. A lot of that was driven by uh, economic and political reforms in the agricultural sphere, but also uh, technological advances as well. And this is an area that also I have some involvement in through the UN uh, with its uh, Horn of Africa uh, project looking to increase food security uh, in the Horn of Africa. The last technological point I'd like to raise is uh, also I think very pertinent uh, to certain parts of Africa and that's mining. So we know that one of the other exciting advances uh, that gets a lot of coverage is artificial intelligence and 5G. But we see this mostly in the context of consumer applications or uh, probably more advanced, uh, we think of these IoT, Internet of Things, advanced smart manufacturing. But there's another very important area that there are important developments being made. And again, this is in mining. So we look at things like coal mining that have historically been dangerous, dirty jobs and other kinds of mining as well, where the intelligent, quickly uh, rolled out applications can make mining uh, both safer, 
as well as more environmentally sustainable. And whatever one's views are on what is the timeline for uh, abandoning fossil fuels, um, for energy security issues, uh, other perhaps uh, other issues, again, we don't really have time to go into. This is a question mark that I think is a legitimate debate, but in any event, technologies like 5G and AI can play a role and certainly play a role in the Anglophone world. Thank you.